Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. It's Food for Thought Friday, and I want to share from uh, one of my favorite devotional books I've ever done. Uh, it's called In the Presence of Jesus by Paul Bain and Matt Litton, and I'm thrilled to let you know that we are going to be having uh, Paul Bain, one of the authors of this book powerful 40-day devotional book on hope is here later this summer i know you're going to be really blessed by that it's simply a 40-day guide to the intimacy with god that you've always wanted uh, i was blessed a friend uh, gave this to me ellen justice last year and uh, man i've just been so blessed by it in fact i'm going back through it again this summer since it was only a 40-day devotional and just laid out differently than any other devotional book i've done in my 40 plus years of being a follower of Jesus. And um, man, if you're looking for a devotional book for this summer, really would encourage you to check it out. But the 26th, day 26 of the 40 days devotional, I was reading that recently uh, again. Uh, like I said, I did it last summer and doing it again this summer. And uh, just really spoke to me in my spirit about maybe, you know, people on Hope is Here need to hear this. So, uh, I want to share with you from this devotional. It says, the title is, Let Me Guard the Words of Your Mouth. Dear Jesus, may I be still and aware of your teaching as I sit with you in this holy now. It says, I want to challenge you to consider how you talk to others and be mindful of the language that you use today. Words are so important. My father spoke the universe into existence with a few words. I commanded the lame to walk and the blind to see, and I even raised Lazarus from the dead with my words. I remind you of these things today because I want you to be aware that words, even your words, carry great power, and they should be used very thoughtfully today. So be considerate when you speak. I understand it's so easy to talk carelessly or become tangled up in gossip, it is human nature to engage in stories that accentuate the troubles and the weaknesses of other people. Everyone loves to be the storyteller and the center of attention, but you should always be mindful of my word to you that comes out of your mouth because it actually reveals the condition of your heart. The things that you say today reflect what is truly happening in your inner being. And your words are the truest measure of the temperature of your soul. Friends, Jesus said that, you know, what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And I know when my words are negative, when they're critical, when they're not God honoring, that it's a heart issue. It's not a mouth issue. The source of the words that we speak, it starts first in our heart before it makes it to our mind. And then it comes out. And I want to encourage you maybe today to kind of take a look at the words that you're speaking. It goes on to say in this powerful devotional, talking about others is often a way to avoid being honest about yourself. Ouch. Let's say that again. Talking about others is often a way to avoid being honest about yourself. If you quiet yourself and reflect, you will find that you often get caught up in gossip in order to avoid the conversations that I really want to have with you. And, you know, friends, that's just so true. You know, talks about in the Bible about, you know, don't judge somebody else. And, you know, when you've got a plank in your own eye, okay, and it's so easy to do to judge others and criticize them. Yet, friends, I know that I know in 50 plus years of life and now over 20 years of ministry that everybody's struggling with something. And just because it's not an area that you struggle in doesn't mean that you need to talk about it because somebody else does. And that's the great thing about Jesus, uh, you know, God, the way he created us. We all have different desires. We have different struggles. And yet we can help each other when we are dealing with those temptations and those struggles goes on to say, you see, when you spend time talking about others, it helps you hide and deny the shortcomings and failures that you deal with every day in your life. But your words have weight capable of healing or destroying another person. You must learn to tame your words. It is a daily practice, just like talking with me or reading scripture. Yeah, I, I want to go back. Just there's one thing I think it's so powerful. Uh, it said, you know, 
but your words have weight capable of healing or destroying another person. You know, friends, I, you know, destroying, it goes without saying, okay? And man, we've got to be so careful. And uh, it's talked about this earlier, but I also want to encourage you that your words can be healing. Sometimes just hearing the words, I love you, or man, I care about you, or sometimes I know that when somebody's hurting, we don't reach out to them because we're like, I don't know what to say. And I want to remind you and encourage you something I learned from one of my heroes of the faith, Wayne Smith, the founding pastor of Southland Christian Church, who has been gone to be with the Lord now for uh, a little over eight years. But I'll never forget this, that, you know, he told me one time, he said, you know, sometimes when you do, you don't have to have the answer to somebody. You approach them or you reach out to them when, you know, they're in a really hurting season in life. Just listen, number one. Just ask them the question, how are you doing? If they say fine, say, well, no, how are you really doing? And just share with me what's going on. And so just listen. Just listen. And then afterwards, I mean, God gives you something after they've shared. And you've listened. It might be 30 seconds. It might be 15 minutes. But if God gives you something, that's great. But if not, all you have to simply say is just say, you know, I want you to hurt. I want you to know because you hurt that I hurt. Such a powerful statement. Simple but powerful. I want you to know because you hurt that I hurt. And man, doesn't it make you feel so much better when you know somebody's, you feel like somebody's with you in the pain, with you in the suffering, with you in the disappointment, with you in the hurt. Oh, friends, it's just so powerful when somebody just says, hey, man, I want you to know because you hurt, I'm hurting today. And maybe you're like, I don't have time even for a conversation. Just text somebody and tell them that they're going through a tough season in life. Just say, hey, I want you to know I was thinking about you. I'm praying for you. And because you hurt, I'm hurting today also. Friends, that is life-giving. And I know there may be somebody, as you heard me share that right now, you're thinking, I know somebody I need to reach out to. And I want to encourage you to do that, friends, right now. It goes on to say in this powerful devotional book, In the Presence of Jesus, and we're looking at day 26, Let Me Guard the Words of Your Mouth. It goes on to say, you must learn to tame your words. It is a daily practice, just like talking with me or reading scripture. Simply be careful not to mention something about someone that you would be comfortable saying to that person face to face. Ouch. Wow, what a great rule of thumb there. Be careful not to mention something about someone that you wouldn't be comfortable saying to that person face to face. Friends, wow, we just save ourselves a lot of heartache, disappointment, and honor God if just, you know, hey, if we wouldn't say to that person face to face, then we don't need to say it. That would really help heal a lot of wounds and families and friends and relationships. And I've had to learn that the hard way myself, friends. And I'm sure many of you listening or watching today and nodding your head too, saying, yep, been there, done that. So good rule of thumb today. You know what? If it's not something you would feel comfortable saying to that person, if they were sitting right there in that conversation or on the phone or in a text next to you where they would receive that or see that, then don't say it. Or as the old saying goes, when we were kids, you know, my mom used to say, you know, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And, you know, I'm here to tell you over 50 years later, that is still true. <laughs> you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Another great word here, it says, stop yourself when you're tempted to tell your side of the story, even when other people have attacked your character. Remember to let me be your defense attorney. Oh, friends, that's one of the advantages of having Jesus as your Lord, but also, you know, your Savior. He's your defender. He's your defender. He's your protector. Don't, to don't tolerate gossip about someone who's not present in the conversation. You may hurt the character of another person simply by giving silent assent to the damning words spoken about them. If you cannot provide a good report about someone, move on to another subject altogether. You know, friends, and that's so easy to do. So many times I've had to learn that, um, you know, uh, just 
everybody likes to talk about themselves. Somebody starts to bring a topic and go down a road that's being negative and critical and gossip. Just simply say, you know, how about those cats? You know, can you believe the baseball team went to the World Series? Or how do you think the football team's going to do this year? Or what do you think about Mark Pope? You know, I mean, you can just change it to a general sports question. Um, or talk about a movie that you've seen maybe or TV show or something. Hey, did you see so-and-so? You know, I mean, did you like Top Gun? Did you see Maverick, the follow-up? I mean, you know, I mean, it's easy to change a subject and do that. But, friends, here's the deal. Gossip is as dangerous as it is easy. Just as you wouldn't do physical to harm to anyone, do your best not to damage people with your words. I encourage you to control your tongue and invite me to guard the words you speak. When you take this precaution, you're protecting your own heart. Be slow to speak today of anything ill about others, and you will be blessed with deeper relationships. Meditate on the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And you will find them reflected in your words. It's in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, friends. So it goes on to say, Let my love shape your vocabulary today. If you meditate on my peace, love, and joy in your heart, then that is the dialect that will emerge in your conversations. Most of all, before you speak, my child, prayerfully consider whether your words are life-giving or are they damaging. My words bring new life and they create peace. Let your words be clear evidence of my work in your heart as you speak my peace into the world. Psalm 141 verse 3 says, Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Matthew chapter 15 verse 8 says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You know, friends, the Bible tells us that words are powerful. After all, God spoke the world into existence, but we are commanded to be careful with our own words. What do your conversations reflect about the condition of your heart today? Are you thoughtful about what you say to others? Have you had verbal conflict with someone for which you need to ask forgiveness? Have you participated in spreading gossip or simply sat quietly when someone else did? What does it mean to surrender your words to Christ today? How can you discipline yourself to speak life into other people? And how can you use your words to spread the peace of Jesus Christ in the world today? There's a daily prayer here at the end of this devotion. It says, Lord Jesus, forgive me for the words I've used that may have hurt others. I surrender my heart to you today and pray that it would be filled with your fruit of the Spirit. I want my words to be a reflection of your work in my life, a blessing that brings hope and light and peace to all who hear them today. In Jesus' name, amen. And then it closes this devotional with a blessing. It's one of the things I love about this devotional book. It closes with a reflection, a daily prayer, and then a blessing for today. And today's blessing in day 26 says, May you speak light into the world with everything you say. May your words have God's signature of love embedded in every syllable. May your heart's vocabulary reflect Jesus Christ, who is working through your life to bring peace to the world today. So hope you've been blessed by this. If you're looking for a great devotional book this summer, it's only 40 days. Get In the Presence of Jesus by Paul Bain and Matt Litton. And today's day 26 was let me guard the words of your mouth. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.